Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I got two things in this video. First, we're going to put the decals on the manure spreader as a finishing touch, and I'm going to pull the Super C in and rebuild the hydraulic pump. My decals arrived, and they're from Sofia, Bulgaria. They even have a customs ticket on the side of them. It took about two weeks to get here. And inside, we have instructions, and the decals all rolled up in there. Here they all are, and as usual with decal sets, there's some that we won't use. We don't need these, and we don't need these little guys. These ones are pretty simple because I've got bends in the sheet metal to tell me by eyeball when things are where they need to be, and these letters are centered in between the folds. And these are vinyl cut decals, but they're different than other vinyl cut decals that I've put on before. So we're just going to mark where we want the edges. So now I've marked where the edges of this backing paper wind up with the decal where I want it. Then I take the decal off, and then flip it over and take the backing paper off. Now it's okay to touch this stuff right here, but you don't want to touch the back side of the letters. And this is the thing that's different about these vinyl decals versus any other I've ever installed. These require a soap and water solution, I guess, to activate the adhesive on it, although they already feel sticky. This is a pint of water and three drops of dish soap. Spray it down. And then spray the surface that it's going on the same stuff. Put the decal on, you can line it up with the tape marks because it'll slide due to it being wet with the soap solution. This is kind of like mylar decals, the way you put on mylar back decals. And then once you get everything lined up, you can squeegee out the excess soapy water. And then also different from regular vinyl cuts that I've used before, you have to let this dry, it says, for at least an hour before you remove the top sheet here. Now I have the model number, 514, and this is quite different from what was on it before. I'll show you a photo of what was on it before. It was very 80s, but I couldn't find it. I suppose I could have had some custom printed, but I didn't want to go through all that rigmarole, and this will be fine. It's just a manure spreader. This side has a different profile because the metal was replaced. I took photos of where the decals were, so we can just eyeball it, you know. As I like to say, it's just a manure spreader. It looks like that's it. I painted around all the old warning decals so they remain in place. Here's the serial number tag. I couldn't paint around the decals on the side because they were all flaking off so they couldn't be saved. One hour later, how satisfying.
This is my 1953 Super C. I went through it last winter, went through it all, except for the hydraulic pump. She's a little dusty. She's not a trailer queen. She gets used on the farm almost every day. I believe the hydraulic pump is in need of some attention, and I'll show you why. This is the hydraulic reservoir right here underneath the fuel tank. And this is the fill plug. She's probably down there. It's supposed to be filled within a half inch of this lip here. And that's what I did last time I changed oil, probably about 40 or 50 hours ago on the tractor. Before I get into it, a quick little overview of how the hydraulic system works on this tractor. This is a hydraulic pump, this little box right here, it runs off the timing gears in the front of the engine so that you have hydraulic power, clutch depressed or not, it's a live system. The supply and return from the pump come all the way back here to this block called the touch control unit and in this block is both the control system for the hydraulics and the cylinders that work these rock shafts to go up and down and raise and lower various implements. This hydraulic system also has an auxiliary valve controlled by this lever here and these lines that come through under the seat into the back feed a hydraulic cylinder here which powers the two-point hitch raise and lower. There are no external leaks on the lines or in this big hydraulic unit here so the only place that it must be losing fluid is through the seal in the front of the pump and then it's getting into the engine oil. That also explains why I pulled more than the usual five quarts of oil out of it last time I changed it. So we might as well get right into it. First thing to do is remove this line here, the supply and return off the pump. I gotta take it loose in the back here too. We'll drain the system. If I take the fill plug out, it's got to keep it from glugging. There we go. I guess the question is, can I pull this line out without taking the hood off? I know the distributor cap's got to come off. Those steel supply and return lines are sealed with O-rings on either end. Now we can take the pump off. There's just two bolts. Now the big question with these pumps is what brand are they? They use two brands, Thompson and Pesco, and the two brands are quite different internally. Certainly that seal wasn't leaking, that's the rear seal. The trick is you got to work these cylinders off of here and they're tight in the body.
This is the seal in question. It doesn't look too bad as far as wear goes, but this is what would have been leaking. And then we look at the front shaft that goes through the seal. I don't really feel any wear there, just a shiny spot. Let's take the front cover off the body. Wowie, you're on there. There we go. Pull this seal out of the front. It's just a regular lip seal. You can drive it out from the back. Here's one way you can identify which pump you have before you get into it. There's a set of numbers on the side of the body, and the first one, I believe, is a manufacturer's own number. And then the second one, and you, I'm sure you can't read this, is the international part number that they stamped on it. And this one reads 383-013-R94. It doesn't match up to any of the part numbers in the parts book for the two pumps. and. I've run into this before where they're not listed. My sense is they made a lot of different versions of these pumps and I have here from Steiner a rebuild kit for a Thompson pump and it doesn't match. It doesn't come with much. No ring, a couple gaskets, a seal. The seal doesn't match. The outer diameter is different. The inner diameter is different. The o-ring doesn't match either o-ring, neither on the front cover or the rear cover. So what am I going to do? Research, I guess. Research. It's a couple days later and I have answers and I have parts. Sorta. Here's what I found. Although the original Super C tractor only came with Thompson and Pesco pumps in them. I have neither. What I actually have is a Worcester pump. And when production out of the Super C and into the 200, the 230s, the 130s, the 100s, the 140s, there were actually four pumps in the mix over the whole time. There was Thompson, Pesco, Worcester, and Cessna. And the Worcesters and the Cessnas came on the later tractors, the 100 series tractors in the 30s and the 40s. This pump body, when I got to looking at it, it's got a manufacture date on it, and that is 1171, November 1971. So sometime in the 70s, this pump, original pump, was replaced with this Worcester pump. Researching parts availability for Worcester pumps, there isn't any, at least that I could find. There may be some rebuild kits laying around at dealers here and there, but there was nothing I could find in dealer inventory online. So I went down to my local Napa and I cross-referenced the old seal, which was a Chicago Rawhide lip seal, cross-referenced that number to an SKF seal. Napa had one on the shelf, SKF 7443 for this pump. Here are the pump parts. I've cleaned everything up and the holdup really was on these O-rings, which are square profile O-rings. There's one in each cover of the pump. They're a different size. They're large square O-rings though, hard to find. So I came up with two options for the O-rings. The first option was from McMaster Car. I ordered stock, three feet of square O-ring stock. This is 3 32nd inch square O-ring. And I figured, well, I could probably super glue O-rings together and make my own O-rings. This pump runs at 1250 to 1500 PSI. Would they hold? I don't know. I have no experience gluing O-rings together and seeing if they'll hold at that pressure. I think they might. But the option that I actually prefer is I use my O-ring rejuvenation method on these existing old O-rings and that is to heat up olive oil on the stove. You can use other oils too 
to the point where it's just hot enough where when you put the o-ring in it doesn't bubble there's a heat point there so you heat it up and you try it and then you let it cool and put the o-ring in when it's hot but the o-ring doesn't bubble in it and then turn the heat off on the oil and just let it sit in that oil for half an hour an hour or whatever and it does a really good job at bringing o-rings back to their original shape i put the calipers on these and they're back to square again even after whatever 45 50 years of compression and i put them under a magnifying glass that i use for repairing old clocks and checked them out real close there is no cracking in these they still have kind of their original grooved finish on the um, seating faces they still got factory marks on the outside so they're nice and pliable i don't see why i couldn't reuse these in fact that's the way i'm going to go reassembly first the seal old seal new seal this was the problem remember leaking through this seal and this funky little guy goes in here I'll get to what it's for in a minute. One check I did after I rejuvenated these O-rings is I checked how much the standout was above this face here to make sure compression was going to make a good seal and I've got a real good standout here along this so I think I'm in good shape. To get this shaft onto the seal without damaging the seal, I'm going to use a piece of wax paper as a slip sheet to work the shoulder of the shaft onto the seal. There we go. All right, onto what these bearings do that slip onto the shafts and what this little doohickey's for and this passage in this cover. In this passage in this cover, this is called, I think, a fluid pressure balance bearing system. I don't understand, it's the magic of hydraulics, but it puts pressure on the back side of each of these bearings on both sides of these shafts to keep them running tight against the gears to prevent fluid leak by around the faces of the gears. Pretty clever. You know what? I forgot. It's best to put the timing gear part of the pump together to hold everything in place. So next is the driven shaft with its bearing. And then on to the pump body. I don't know if you can see that, but this zone in here is where those block bearings ride and they squeeze on the drive a driven gear like that. Here's where the gear teeth ride. And there is wear in there, I can really feel it. But at this point, I don't really have much of a choice. It builds pressure all right, and a new pump, when I checked, was about $600. And in this case, I'm getting by with a $20 rebuild. That's what the parts cost me. Mm -hmm. Front cover screws. Next to rear pump bearings, and we have witness marks from this oil passage on these, so we know which way they go. Let's check. Yep, arched passage. Your cover o-ring, this is really a funky shape. Mm -hmm. 
torque input shaft to specification, bend up locking tab. Before tightening everything up, that's with the pump and these three plates, they got a little bit of play so they need to self-align. When you get a nice easy turn like that, you know you're in the right neighborhood. Torque body bolts to 20 foot-pounds or 240 inch-pound. These were about as tight as tight, so that's the way they're going back together. We'll fill her back up. I think the whole system capacity is between four and five quarts. Give it a try. Sometimes if you have a bad seal, you'll see this fluid kind of roiling in here with pump action. I don't see any of that. this with the fill plug off to burp any air out of the system. Yeah, it needs a quarter or so more. And you fill it with everything in the back position. All the cylinders are cracked. I changed the engine oil and just needs a little bit of paint touch up here.
little bit. Almost out of gas. It's pretty chilly out today, but we'll take her for a short joyride. pump sounds much better. I don't hear much of any whine at all. Alrighty, fourth gear. My shop is empty. That finishes the four fix-it jobs that I had for this fall. The H, the 656, the manure spreader, and the Super C. They're all done, the little projects. Now it's on to the big project. And what will that be? I do have a restoration planned for this winter. Stay tuned. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time.